Hi everyone, um, I'm Nanel Gavinder from the division of Anatpath and I'm here to tell you about um, a project we did this year in anatomical pathology which was to make audio tours for a museum we have here on campus. So some of the tutorials in anatomical pathology um, in second year they, the students physically sit with a specimen, they sit in groups, they work through the specimen and that's how they learn. But in third year this is what the tutorial looked like for anatomical pathology. It was this really flat, really boring worksheet. This photo is about as boring as their actual task was. It was literally a Word document. There was no feedback given to the students. There was no room for engagement. There was no consultant guiding them through the answers, apart from the model answers which would come up later for them. So I'm sure you can understand that I identified this as a problem. People in the back of the room already look bored with the worksheet, so you can imagine how the students felt. Then we have this great facility. This is our pathology learning center. This is what the main room looks like. So usually students sit at groups around these tables and they work through specimens and they rotate from one to another. <coughs> it works well in that kind of situation. But as I said, in third year they had these really boring worksheets. And the reason they had these really boring worksheets was because we didn't have the time on the timetable to conduct tutorials like this. These tutorials take hours and they require human resources. So we need to get specialists from the laboratory up in the hospital. We need to pull them away from their clinical work so that they can guide the students through these tutorials. And for those of you who work clinically, and I know many of you do, you can imagine the burden that has on their workload. So I needed to find a way to, to create a tutorial with consultant supervision without actually having them there. And here I thought I should pause to clarify for those of you who aren't medics or don't know pathology, when I say specimen, this is what I mean. It's a physical human organ which has been preserved in fluid in what they call bottles or jars. And they're all different sorts, and that's just one of them, just to clarify what I mean by a specimen. And what's interesting is, Although in their old worksheets they were asked flat questions about these specimens, they would be examined in the OSPEs on actual specimens. So either they would see pictures of these specimens or real ones and have to answer questions based on what they saw. So for those of you who are educationists, education people in the room, you could understand the issue with the lack of alignment there. Okay, so here was the inspiration. So many of you have been to a museum already. Standard issue, art or history museum, where at the front desk you pick up one of those headphone contraptions and then you get to a sculpture or a painting and you dial in a number and you hear something about this piece of art. And what that audio tour, that museum has done is that it's enriched your experience at the museum. You went from knowing nothing about the Picasso to knowing a little bit more. So I thought about it and then I did the research uh, on it and I found that someone else has done this before in a pathology museum at Leiden University. So they did something similar in their pathology museum where they created audio tours for their pathology museum. And I thought it would be very nice to copy their idea. <laughs> so I stopped here with this photo to show you that you cannot possibly build audio tours for your setting alone. It's not possible. The guy at the end, that's Tony Wu. He's one of the pathologists. So Jane would pull specimens out. And then I would physically have to get Tony down to the museum and ask him, which ones do you think work, Tony? Which ones work well with your lectures? Which ones are appropriate for undergraduate third years? And then Tony would pick some, and then he would say, okay, here's a script for the audio tour. And I'd go back to my office and read it and be like, no, there's huge gaps here. He's saying things I don't even know what he's talking about. Then I'd go back to D7, Tony, we have to tweak this. And that's why I put these arrows to show you the back and forth that's required. And the last is the medical students. So once we created these audio tours, we got feedback from them to see how they felt about it and then tweaked again. Eventually what would happen is, we had the specimen, Tony came up with a script, we'd take a photo, I would make audio. I would lay the audio over the high quality photo in a PowerPoint presentation and leave it just as an MP3. So the PowerPoint, you know, you can convert PowerPoint to video at the end. So I would let the students download either an mp4 video file, which they could watch on their own, and that video file had not just audio, but annotations. So I would say, look, here's a nodule, and then highlight it with a little circle. And look, this is the uterus, uterus label. So it was more guided in terms of education. And the mp3 they could download to their smartphone, small file. They'd come to the museum, there would be a specimen set up for them, they could come at their own time. 
put their headphones in and listen to my voice and Tony's words guiding them physically through a specimen. So that eventually was the idea. Um, this is sort of what the PowerPoint looked like. I don't know if it's going to play with sound. It does not want to play with sound. Anyway, it was sort of like this for them. The audio would play automatically and these labels which are all coming up at once in the student version, it would come up timed, obviously, so slowly introducing them to the labels. We asked for feedback from our students very informally. It wasn't research. I didn't want to make research out of it. I just wanted to know how they felt about it. And overwhelmingly, the response was positive. Mm -hmm. um, that could be because the baseline of a worksheet is very low, and this was just a bit better than that. But they liked it, and I, I found it interesting that people have been now asking for it. So now we're towards the end of the year, they're like, yeah, but where's the audio to us for neuropathology? Because we're struggling. Uh, if I had heaps of money, I might even think about eventually doing something like an app where everything becomes integrated. The photographs, the audio tours, navigating the museum could be really special in something like an app, but obviously that costs a lot of money and time to develop. But one can have dreams.